Hi, it's Carol Clark with Weight Loss Practice Builder, and welcome back to another episode of this podcast, Build the Weight Loss Practice of Your Dreams. And today we're talking all things decision related. And I've been talking with so many practices and we have all had to make so many decisions in our practice. And as you know, I'm in the trenches just like you. So it's decisions over everything related to the current pandemic. You know, it's how are we gonna have to modify our hours, perhaps our staffing, perhaps the products and services that we offer. Offer, how we're offering our services, how we're opening back up, how we're maintaining the requirements that are set upon us for the safety of our team and our patients and ourselves, as well as just really what's the right business action. And so a lot of decisions have had to be made. And as I've worked with physicians and practices, sometimes it's just a matter of getting over that whole overwhelm because that just leads to indecision. I don't know how many I've talked to are just, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know where to start. So making decisions helps give you that momentum. So we're gonna be talking about how to make the best decisions today. And granted, we're not all gonna make the best decisions, but making a decision and selecting a path is far better than just kind of wondering or just living in this permanent state of worry or, you know, overwhelm. So when we have to make a decision about something, and there have been, like I say, a lot of them to make, there are some things that get in the way. First of all, what can get in the way? That whole emotion, you know, just it's fraught with emotion. How am I gonna uh, say tell my my team I have to reduce their hours or that I have to lay somebody off? You let this emotion just kind of take over, which is natural. You lose track of what is most important right now that has to be addressed. Or we may be lost in the emotion of like, who's going to get mad about that? Who's gonna be upset? What are the repercussions of it? So we do need to work through that, but we can't let us remain in a state of indecision. So that can get in the way just a fear, fear of the unknown, fear of change, fear of lack of revenue, of what this is gonna mean for your practice and for your business, fears of another big uh, barrier to making a decision. The other thing is just that whole uncertainty uh, and better yet, maybe even a little bit of comfort and just always doing things the way you've always done it. And you get kind of used to that. And so it can stymie our creativity and our vision for improving things. And then lastly, a lack of knowledge can keep us from making a decision. Perhaps you haven't, you don't have the knowledge to make that full decision. So seeking that knowledge will help you be more comfortable with your decisions. So once we work through some of those barriers and we identify those, we can then get on to the decision-making process. So how does that all work? And I know you, you make decisions every single day. You care for your patients in an outstanding way. And I'm not referring to patient care and what's right for this algorithm or for the symptoms that are presented in front of you. I'm talking about for your business, which still has symptoms, so to speak. But really what you want to do is to take a pause when you have a big decision to make especially and really think back to what is your vision what's your vision for your practice don't just do something because everybody else is doing it what is your vision for your practice and the patients that you want to serve. So remember to think about your vision. Your vision is really important. And then secondly, think about what your desired outcome is. If you focus on the outcome, oftentimes the steps to get there can fall right into place. And so we wanna make sure you're focusing on what is the outcome and not just what, you know, kind of just the fact that I have a big decision in front of me. What's the outcome that you want? And then we take baby steps and we kind of reverse engineer it and figure out how to get there. So first of all, know what you want. Make sure that you know the outcome and think that through in your own brain. I like to have sort of my own plan of action, but I don't just dictate it to other people. And what that does is it also increases creativity for your team. It increases buy-in for your team. So once you know the outcome that you want and sort of your perceived steps of what's the best way to get there, then get the key members in place that need to help with implementation and also need to buy into this whole outcome or need to be a part of that solution and sit down with them and say, here's the outcome that I desire. Here are some of the steps that I think we can get there. Let me know what you think because they are gonna come up with some of the best ideas on how to get there. So for example, if it's a modification in hours, if it's a modification in the system in terms of how you're doing some medication dispensing, if it's a change in the products that you're offering, 
we just recently had this. We're actually streamlining a lot of our products. We're looking at what's the best sellers. We're looking at how we package things together. We're kind of revamping that. And my retail sales manager has been awesome through that. So there's some products that don't sell overall, but we have some patients who really rely on it. So she came up with a creative way of letting them place a bulk order and pay for it ahead of time so we can get that in and they can have that product without us buying a large quantity that other people aren't particular buying and having it sitting on our shelves and then eventually having to throw it away. So these are just little things. So it could relate to a product, it could relate to a uh, the hours of operation, how you're doing your telehealth, how you're doing your patient education, involving your team, but knowing your outcome, sort of your plan, sitting down with them, talking to them about what the outcome is desired, how you see that you might be able to get there or letting them brainstorm then some, some ideas and uh, maybe some better ways of making that happen, determining the plan and then identifying who's responsible for what aspects of it and going for it. And just making that decision will make you feel so much better. It'll get you past that indecision. So making that decision and then being willing to reevaluate and be able to pivot. People don't get as upset about change, especially if they're a part of the change. And it's just a part of building a great team that starts to think in outcome driven in an outcome driven manner. And really the other thing that I want to mention is you want to make sure that you keep the patient at heart. If you keep your heart focused on what's going to be best for your patient, it you end up making better decisions. So it granted it has to be a best for the business and for your team, but number one, it has to be what's going to be good for your patients so that you can have great outcomes. Because if you get me on my marketing uh, platform, I'm going to talk to you the whole, about that whole circle of building those patients that love what you offer and uh, referring more people and telling other people about you so you're not the best kept secret. So those are sort of my, uh, in my information in terms of how to make a great decision. We don't all make great decisions every single day, but this will really help ensure, number one, that you make a decision and that you focus on the outcome and that it actually gets implemented. And then you can just make tweaks to it along the way and uh, modify as you need to. So I hope you found this helpful. Share with me any information that you have. If you are in Bariatric Business Boss, we are on fire. We're doing the seven systems of building a very effective practice. And marketing is a big one of them. We've actually, we're actually spending three or four weeks on that. And then I do education every single week. Today we're doing a website audit. Next week will be a social media audit. Uh, we've, we've covered um, a whole system on how to hire and uh, nurture your team and we're doing this over the next few months but you can get in everything's in there and I just released today the new social media calendar for July with some really great stuff it's all plug and play ready for you to go so you don't have to wonder about what to post tomorrow so if you're not a part of Baratric Business Boss goodness sakes go to BaratricBusinessBoss.com Business, check it out and please join me uh, we have great calls I have one-on-one -on -one calls with you to help implement everything and uh, I think you will really Really enjoy it. I so enjoy the practices that I work with. A lot of times they just have questions about what I'm seeing across the country and we tweak things specific to their area. It's just really a great group. So please hop on over there, bariatricbusinessboss.com. It's the best little bit of money that you spend every single much, month. So in the meantime, take care. Hope you guys have a great and awesome week and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.